Eric, lots to pick at from that interview with John Thornton. What stood out to you? I think you made it very clear. Um, you said, hey, he only played this many games with Real Madrid. People questioned his club uh, resume last year. And he was like, all right, how many players in Major League Soccer would play that many games with Real Madrid? I think it's, it's a valid statement. You're mm -hmm. still getting a very good player. Yep. Uh, I was struck by the ambition. One, you know, when he's talking about CONCACAF Champions League, but also the, the team that they're building. I was on ESPN FC the other day. I called it a, a super team. I mean, they're, they're clearly stepping it up a notch. So I think I was taken back by that. And then I was taken aback by his, his confidence, which I guess comes with ambition. But um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of doubt here. And I wonder if some of that hurt comes back to the way this contract is structured. Um, the bail contract specifically, I don't really see a lot of risk in it from a timing thing. He's going to be very, very committed right now because he's got to be in shape for the World Cup. Then you're really only exposed for a few months at the beginning of next year. Look, if after the World Cup he wants to retire, you're on the books for not not DP money, TAM money for the beginning of 2023, and then you just cut ties. Yeah. So so where's the risk here for, for LAFC? I, I think it's, it's really it's um, minimal. a win-win. It's minimal because uh, the... Person or the player assuming, or I should say, the one assuming all the risk is the player. It's Gareth Bell himself. It's a World Cup year. Uh, people question his will, his mentality, uh, his wanting to be there, his motivation. Uh, he's got the World Cup coming up with Wales. You're going to Major League Soccer, which most would assume is a step down. I mean, it's a huge upside for LAFC. It's a huge gamble, roll of dice for Gareth Bell. But if you're John Thorington, if you're LAFC, this is a win-win for you. Yeah, absolutely. Really like it from the LAFC perspective. Herc, what about the MLS perspective? And I want to call in a quote from Don Garber. This is not from like a decade ago, Herc. No, this was from ancient times, uh, March, so three months ago. Quote, we don't need to bring in a big name player at the end of their career because they've decided they'd like to retire in MLS. Uh, Herc, what do you make of it? Does the bail signing here contribute to Major League Soccer's retirement league image concerns you're a sneaky fella you, you took that neymar quote when he was trying to bash an neymar and you, you're trying to make it fit in here i, I see what you're doing but, but let's be honest seb he's 32 years old that's by no means 36 37 years old and you're really questioning what he has in the tank and just take a look at the resume take a look at the resume i'm convinced what happened at real madrid the last year is a marriage that was on his last leg it needed to <clears throat> end and that's what happened. But you look at him when healthy. You look at him when he's really on the field and he gets going. There are a few like him. His last year in the English Premier League, uh, the man hit double-digit goals. Uh, he played 30-something games between uh, league play, cups, and what have you. Europa League as well. It's a good signing. You saw what he did to Austria. You saw what happened in the Ukraine. You saw you, you get to see where he's going to be this winter at the World Cup, it just makes sense. There are only a handful of teams in my mind in the world that would say no to Gareth Bale at this price. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, as a TAM deal, you gotta be crazy, right? I get I get where this is going to be, you know, from a, from a narrative standpoint, difficult. Because what is Gareth Bale best known for at this point? Golf, which is synonymous with retirement. And, and you know that the questions about motivation are, are going to follow him to this league. So I definitely think from a global perspective, it's, it's going to further that reputation. But I would just always fall back on this. Who cares? MLS is not a teenager anymore. It doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks about you. MLS is almost 30. And Herc, let's be honest. Some of the highlights in the last few years, maybe you could say the best MLS has offered us, are the retirement players. Yeah. My top moment of the last half decade is Zlatan. Sorry. Uh it is. And if you think about this week, I mean, this weekend we're celebrating Wayne Rooney's golasso from half field that he scored for D.C. United. So that's another player that you would say was coming in in retirement. A guy who most said was coming to retire was David Beckham, and he changed the complexion of the league. He was a before and after of this league. So say what you want. The league has always been propped up by the big star player, and it's been a while. It has been a while since we have said there are star players in Major League Soccer. It's good to see them back. Uh, bottom line, Herc, here, what does your gut tell you? Is this going to be a bombazo or is this going to be a bust? I mean, bust has to assume that you take a lot of the risk. I, I think it's closer to the Slatan side of posting up good numbers than it is to the absolute failure side. He's just got so many intangibles. If I had to bet right now, just with the type of player he is when healthy, I think it'd do a lot of highlight real damage in this league. 
Yo, can I, I think it's a bombazo, and I think it's a bombazo that's going to last. You, you would know more about this, but you, you said an unhappy marriage at Real Madrid. Uh, this is a guy who I think is going to be happy in Los Angeles. And you mentioned his age. He's only 32, right? Um, we're looking at this here. Let's say the next year goes well, and you re-up him as a designated player for 18 months. You could get Gareth Bale from 32 to 34, who's trying to extend his international career for the European Championships, in 2024 you could get a supremely motivated player and again to your point we're not talking about post 35 we're talking about in their early 30s so i, I think even if you even if it was a huge risk i would still say it's going to be a bombazo but but when you factor in the amount of money being spent i think it's a it's an obvious obvious win for lafc and it's it's going to be a success when we talk about money spent though there's a lot more money being spent in toronto i don't know if you saw this today lorenzo insigne was introduced today in a, in a very very flashy outfit Herc. I wonder if you uh, borrowed it out of your closet. 15 million is the reported salary uh, for Lorenzo Insigne over a four-year deal. So a way bigger commitment there for Toronto FC. Bale Insigne for what's left of 2022. Who do you think is going to be a bigger impact? Uh, Christian Bale. Oh, Christian Bale. Gareth <laughs> Bale, excuse me. <laughs> You're in Hollywood mode. I am Batman. <laughs> uh, Gareth Bale, without a doubt, just on paper, look at his team. Look what he has around him. Look where they are. Look how they're functioning. He's going into a situation where he's going to be set up to succeed. I don't know what Lorenzo Insigne is going to expect out of Bob Bradley's team right now. This team, who's definitely in a rebuild mode. So if you're asking me to bet, I would bet the chips on Gareth Bell. And going really quickly, briefly, these things that you said about being motivated, the age, retirement league, I heard these same things with Carlos Vela. I heard mm -hmm. these same things with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Both players had some very, very good years, historic years in Major League Soccer. And don't Real do that, quick, producer. If Lorenzo <laughs> Insigne was going to LAFC, what would you say then? If they were both going to the same team, who would you rather have? Uh, Money's even. Probably, Ooh. probably Lorenzo, only because Insigne, only because <laughs> this is, might be a problem. When you look at the profile of Gareth Bell, right winger likes to cut into his left foot, a very good left foot, good at dribbling, 1v1, set piece specialist. They already have that in Carlos Vela. So I kind of wonder where things will fit there. Uh, but listen, it's still a very good player. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.